We're looking at trying to get everybody out of here at two o'clock. I apologize if we go a couple minutes over, but trust me, it will be worth it uh, because there might be some giveaways if you stay on until the end. Hint, hint, please stay until the very end. Um, welcome to today's Adapted Circle of Wellness Employee Health Series. We are so excited to have you with us. Uh, as a just general note um, and reminder, we're going to actually be recording today's session. Uh, this is for uh, our folks who were unfortunately unable to join us. It's also for you guys if you want to go back and look at the resources and tips that we provide uh, or just share everything that we provide today with your colleagues. So my name is Krista Pattison. I am a research project manager with Penn State Pro Wellness. We're a nonprofit organization that's committed to educating and inspiring youth and families to eat well, engage in regular physical activity, and become champions for bringing healthy choices to life. We partner with funding organizations at a local, state, and national level to conduct our work in communities and schools throughout Pennsylvania and across the United States. For the past 16 years, we've provided support to schools and community organizations to improve wellness environments in alignment with that whole school, whole community, whole child model, or really just that holistic model looking at child wellness. Historically, much of our school programming has really focused on providing professional development and capacity building to that child uh, wellness, uh, particularly mental health, nutrition, physical activity. While those are obviously still very crucial topics and areas of focus for us, we felt that this was a perfect time to combine our school programming with some of our employee health resources to meet the needs of our teachers and our staff throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So while you are probably familiar with our resources for students, uh, since I believe most of you are probably some of our healthy champion contacts. We also provide employee wellness through a partnership with Penn State Health, where we focus specifically on employee health at our satellite states throughout Penn, uh, Penn State Health. Uh, Penn State Health encourages employees to understand the overall wellness in terms of eight dimensions. These include emotional, financial, intellectual, vocational, social, physical, environmental, and spiritual. Uh, as you might remember, a couple months ago, we sent a survey asking all of you to tell us which of these dimensions you would be the most interested in learning about. The top four were uh, physical, social, and intellectual, emotional wellness dimensions. And today we're going to focus on the physical wellness and social wellness. Uh, I'm going to start with the physical wellness, uh, which encompasses all areas of health that relate to the physical aspects of the body. And then a little bit later, Marissa from uh, Leadership and Development is going to be talking about social wellness, which encompasses all aspects of the well-being pertaining to social connections, relationships, and personal expression. So a healthy body, good physical health habits, nutrition, exercise, and appropriate health care all make up the physical dimension of health. This also includes self-awareness to create routines that are balanced in our regular daily tasks and responsibilities. The physical wellness dimension is crucial and, and honestly, probably why we really want to start with this dimension. I'm happy that you guys found interest in physical wellness dimension because the physical wellness dimension really kind of sets the stage for those other dimensions. Uh, it, it allows us to nurture and focus on those other dimensions. So the social and financial aspects, we can focus on those once our uh, physical wellness is taken care of. For today's presentation, I'm going to provide information and resources relating primarily to physical activity, which is why it's highlighted, but I'm also going to provide some quick and broad uh, tips and facts and resources for those other areas of focus as well. I want, to do, I want to begin, though, with a physical wellness quiz. So if you'll just take the next couple of minutes here, uh, I, I really just want to assess everyone's strength in the physical wellness dimension. We're not going to share these, so please be honest. Uh, uh, this is really just to kind of set the stage for what we're going to be discussing today. So if you kind of want to just go through, give yourself a point for each of these statements, and then add up your score. I'm going to give you just a couple minutes here uh, to work through this.
Okay. So as you kind of continue to score uh, your, your quiz here, what we're really looking at is if you've scored between a 15 and um, 20, congratulations, uh, you are considered excellent and, and very strong in this dimension, a score of nine to 14 that shows, you know, where you could show a little bit of improvement and then zero to eight means that this dimension needs a lot of work, but no problem, no worries. Uh, what I would ask is that you kind of flag those ones that you got a zero and a one on. And as we move through, uh, you kind of, you, you know, um, think about some of those tips and resources that will help you bring, bring yourself to a two here and make improvements to your overall wellness. When it comes to nutrition, the first thing that comes to mind is really how much should I be eating? So there are specific guidelines and recommendations for adults overall based on a healthy eating pattern for a 2000 caloric diet, the key recommendations for adults. Uh, so use a variety of foods every day. This includes two cups of fruit, two and a half cups of vegetables, eating foods low in fat, saturated fat and cholesterol, eat moderate, um, moderate amounts of sugar, eat a limited amount of salt and sodium. The key here is to stay below one teaspoon of salt a day. Uh, my general tips for folks is keep the salt shakers off the table and try to replace any salt in your recipes with fresh herbs, dry herbs, or just garlic. Drink plenty of water. That goes without saying. And then I, what I personally think is the most difficult is exercising portion control. Uh, one of the ways that you could learn a little bit more about portion control is on the right hand side of your screen. The USDA Choose My Plate and the Food Pyramid are both great resources to, to learn a little bit more about these recommendations, particularly that portion control. Although the amount of sleep that we get is really important, the signs of poor quality uh, are really also important to, to know. So not feeling rested even after getting enough sleep, repeatedly waking up during the night and experiencing symptoms of sleep disorders such as snoring or, or gasping for air. The main tip and recommendation is try to manage your routine to carve out time to rest and sleep and cut back on caffeine. Uh, improving your sleep hygiene really includes just kind of setting the stage for, for the perfect sleep environment. This includes sticking to the same sleep schedule every day. I know that that's difficult on weekends or days that you have to work longer or you just wanna be social, right? Uh, try to carve out those, those times that you, you should be sleeping. Practice a re relaxing uh, pre-bed routine if that's taking a bath or just you know spritzing your pillow with, with um, menthol spray, whatever it might be. Uh, choose the best mattress that is supportive and comfortable. So I'm giving you all the excuses to go out and purchase the most expensive mattress you possibly can. I'm trying to convince my husband to do so and outfit that bed with the best pillows and bedding uh, that you possibly can. And then obviously remember to, to cut back on the, the caffeine and alcohol an hour before bed and then disconnect from electronics at least an hour before, before you go to sleep every night. We're all aware of misusing um, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs and how they can uh, have both immediate and long-term effects. So I'm not gonna spend much time on this slide. There are a couple of tips and resources though, if you wanna support yourself or, or a colleague or a family member. Medication safety. Overall, the tips are really know your medication, know the names, the doses, why you're taking it, what those side effects are, what happens if you miss a dose, take your medication. Most importantly, uh, always make sure that you renew your medication in advance so you don't run out, don't have your pills, uh, keep your medication safe. So away from children, pets, uh, store your medication uh, away from uh, other families' medication, and then always keep medications in their original bottle. I know it's tempting when you travel, throw up all your medication, ibuprofen, what have you in the same bottle. Don't do that. Uh, when you're in the hospital, make sure you always identify yourself to the nurse before they give you any sort of medication. Uh, know which medications you'll need to take when you leave the hospital. And then learn more about potential side effects. And we have some, some links here to, to learn a little bit more about drug safety. 
preventive medicine. So the U.S. Uh, preventive Service Task Force releases recommendations for preventative services based on rigorous review of the uh, evidence. These recommendations are combined with the CDC recommendations for booster shots. Overall, for adults, it's important to know that you should receive regular checkups measuring weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. Pap tests should be performed every three to five years for women ages 21 to 65, mammograms every two years beginning at the age of 50 for women, colorectal cancer screenings beginning at 50 for both men and women, and then booster shots to protect both men and women from any uh, diseases later in life. And then obviously some tips and resources uh, to meet those preventive medicine needs. As I mentioned, we're really going to focus today on presentation on physical activity. If you have any questions, uh, obviously there's a, there's a lot that goes into the physical wellness dimension. I really breezed over those other focus areas. So if you have some questions or if you want a little bit more information, don't hesitate to reach out. We're going to share our information at the end of this uh, presentation. So please feel free, free to contact us if you have any other questions. So the good news when it comes to physical activity is that between 2008 and 2016, we really saw a nice increase in the number of U.S. adults ages 18 years and older who met the aerobic and muscle strengthening guidelines. However, COVID hit and the research is now showing that we are all less physically active than we were before. Uh, I don't have the specific numbers as of yet, but this is uh, what we are definitely seeing. So this is an important topic to, to revisit and reconsider. There are many benefits, as we all know, to being physically active. In fact, a single session of moderate to vigorous physical activity can reduce blood pressure, improve insulin sensitivity, improve sleep, reduce anxiety symptoms, and improve some aspects of cognition on the day it's performed. These benefits obviously increase as physical activity becomes a part of your lifestyle. Throughout any recommended uh, guidelines, you're going to see references often made to four levels of physical aerobic activity, inactive, insufficiently active, active, and highly active. These classifications are important to know and understand because they are related to how much health benefit a person can obtain at a given level and how to also become more active. So you become a little bit more self-aware of where you are and where you could go. I am. I will note that in guidelines, they typically will focus on aerobic physical activity. This is not to say that other activities such as muscle strengthening activities that we'll discuss later are less important. This is just how they define levels of physical activity. Uh, you can obviously read this, but being inactive is nothing beyond the basic movement from daily life activities. Insufficiently active is getting that less than 150 minutes of moderate in uh, intensity physical activity a week. Uh, active is doing the equivalent of, of where we should be. And then the highly active is doing th more than 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a week. Which I will note, uh, most Americans, we're not, most of us are not highly active. Um, I, will, I will note that, nor are we uh, meeting the vigorous uh, intensity activity, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. Physical activity guidelines also consider the intensity with which people do physical activity. Obviously, some activities are higher in intensity than others. We know this. A well-known physiological effect of physical activity is that it expends energy. A metabolic equivalent of task or MET is a unit useful for describing energy expenditures for specific activities. So a MET is the ratio of activity it's the rate of energy expended during activity versus the rate of energy expended at rest. So at rest, you're at one. If you expend three METs, that means you are expending uh, three uh, metabolic equivalents of tasks higher than you would be at rest. What we're really looking for is we want to be above that, that three, uh, but per preferably up to that six or more. Scientists have given common activities all met scores. So when you see uh, walking briskly and playing doubles tennis or raking yard and why that that falls between moderate intensity, that's because scientists have decided that it receives a met score between three and 5.9. Um, 
I don't want to get bogged down with, with math or anything here. So what I'm going to say is that the intensity of aerobic activity can be defined in absolute or relative terms. These are the key guidelines to defining any level of intensity. Here, when we talk about light, moderate, and vigor, vigorous, those are absolute. That's not taking into account an individual's cardiorespiratory fitness. Relative intensity is the level of effort required to do an activity. This does take in a person's a uh, personal cardiorespiratory fitness. Uh, less fit people generally require high, higher levels of effort than fit people to do an activity. So those are also really important points to remember as you move through becoming more physically active. You want to know where you're starting and what your level of intensity might be. Honestly, though, how much do I need to work out? Right. Um, so aerobic activities or endurance cardio activities, these should be performed at least 150 minutes uh, a week. This would show substantial benefits at 300 minutes. You're looking at extensive benefits when um, when adults meet the equivalent of at least 150 minutes, you lower your risk of stroke, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, some cancers. As people move from 150 minutes toward that 300 minute mark, the number of benefits are going to continue to increase. And as you increase those number of minutes, you're going to increase those benefits. Uh, and I will note too that research has not identified an upper limit of total activity above which additional health benefits cease to occur. So you can continue to be active as much as you want. You can do whatever you want with that information. Uh, the goal here is really to, to reach that 150 minutes. Aerobic physical activity preferably should be spread throughout the week. This is really to prevent injury as well as uh, excessive fatigue. Episodes of physical activity can be divided throughout the day or week, depending on what meets your, your preference and, and your daily schedule, right? Uh, it takes less time to get the same benefit from vigorous intensity activities than moderate. That makes sense. A general rule of thumb is two to one rule. So two minutes of moderate intensity activity counts the same as one minute of vigorous intensity. So if you have less time, try to be a little bit more vigorously active here. Muscle strengthening activities provide additional benefits not found with aerobic activities. Examples include lifting weights, working with resistance bands, with which hopefully you all have received, uh, doing calisthenics that use body weight for resistance, such as push-ups, pull-ups, planks, or just carrying heavy loads and heavy gardening at home, if that's what you prefer to be doing. Muscle strengthening activities for all the major muscle groups should be done at least two times a day. There's no specific time limit to this, the general rule of thumb is that you should continue to do the stru muscle strengthening activity until you can't do another repetition or it becomes more difficult. I wanted to provide some examples here of moderate intensity activities. So walking briskly, recreational swimming, uh, biking, active forms of yoga, including vinyasa, general yard work or home repairs. It doesn't matter how you get this physical activity. If it's something you enjoy, go out and work on the home or the yard um, or those exercises exercise classes. Vigorous intensity activities uh, are those ones that you're going to be hitting that six, those six mets or more. So jogging, running, swimming laps, tennis, uh, bicycling faster than 10 miles per hour, jumping rope, uh, hit, uh, which is extremely popular right now, um, and exercise classes like step aerobics or kickboxing. Ways to get your 30 minutes at work. So walking fitness classes during lunch, getting active in groups. So walking groups on campus, stop at the gym before or after work. If that's an option for you, use the steps, park across campus and bike to and from your building or just walk, uh, use the bathroom upstairs or downstairs, depending on where you are. Desk sizes. I imagine that this infographic is probably really familiar to most of you. Uh, you have probably received this. If not, it's found on our website. And uh, I shared the source there at the bottom of the screen, uh, standing desks, bike desks, and then team activity breaks during meetings. Uh, to get those strength uh, training exercises in, take advantage of webinars or calls, do leg lifts, stand while you're on the phone using free weights. I admittedly uh, keep free weights in my desk 
drawer at work, which I haven't been to work in months, um, but I do have free weights at home, uh, but use those free weights. You know, if you have a couple extra minutes, do some arm exercises, push-ups and sit-ups might be a little bit more difficult. I don't know if you want to get on the floor at your school, um, but, you know, using those free weights uh, is a nice, is a nice compromise and use those resistance bands that we sent. Uh, I, I haven't used them, but I have heard that they are pretty difficult. So uh, maybe just a couple squeezes on with those resistance bands will do the trick. Uh, just as a reminder for inactive or insufficient in sufficiently active adults who do not yet receive the equivalent of 115 minutes of moderate uh, intensity physical activity, the initial amount of activity should be light and moderate to, to begin with for short periods of time with sessions spread throughout the week. That's why it's so important to know where you're starting at baseline. Be realistic, really set realistic goals for yourself, start small. Uh, I will say that there is research that shows that going from zero to just 60 minutes a day has shown the greatest impact for an individual versus moving from moderate to vigorous. Um, so anything is something, right? So uh, muscle strengthening activity should also be gradually increased over time. For active adults, using the two for one rule and, and moving from moderate to more visit, uh, vigorous intensity, intensity aerobic uh, activities can be beneficial. And we really encourage adults to uh, have a variety of activities so you don't get burnout. Individuals should get set goals for activities that allow them to achieve the benefits they value. Develop knowledge and skills to attain these goals. So as I mentioned, it's really important to kind of know, know your baseline, where you're starting at, know what intensity you should be doing, uh, your, your level of workouts. If you're not sure, please feel free to reach out. There are a ton of guidelines and recommendations and resources out there. We'll provide just a few. Uh, participation in physical activity in a community setting with others, such as friends and families, can really increase physical activity levels. So adults are more likely to participate in physical, physical activity if they have a buddy, uh, which is a great great segue actually into our next presentation on, on social wellness. These are just a few of our resources. Uh, CDC has extensive detailed guidelines and suggestions for active lifestyles, pro-wellness. We have uh, numerous tips and resources to living healthier lives, not just for children, but for adults as well. The Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, this is where I got most of the information, uh, both for today's uh, session as well as what's presented on the Pro Wellness website. Uh, the Office for Disease Prevention and Health Promotion is uh, tasked by Congress to coordinate disease prevention activities, and they're really behind a lot of the research and evidence-based practices for the guidelines that are set in place, uh, including their Move Your Way campaign, which is great at meeting people where they are and helping you set realistic goals. This is a link to the activity planner, which is wonderful because it helps you set those goals, choose activities you want to do, and tips to help keep you motivated. I am going to turn it over now to Marissa from Penn State Health uh, Human Resources Learning and Development, who is going to be focusing her presentation on social wellness dimension. As a reminder, the social wellness encompasses all aspects of well-being pertaining to social connections, relationships, and personal expression. Thanks for that introduction, Krista. I can share my screen if that works. Yes, of course. I am going to stop sharing and then you should have access to begin. So as I rearrange my screen here, everyone, I just wanted to say welcome um, and thank you to Krista and her team for having me here um, to be able to share um, one piece of social wellness. We are going to be talking today about meaningful connections at work and how that relates to happiness. Um, my colleague Keisha Shaw helped me to develop this, so I wanted to include her here um, on the title page. So rather than talk about all the things you need to know in this virtual world and navigating Zoom, 
I just wanted to give you an invitation for success. Um, we'll be discussing happiness, engagement, and connection, which are topics that can bring up a lot for anyone. I'd like to keep this a brave, safe space by listening and sharing freely, keeping an open mind and refraining from judgment. So if you are able in your current space, minimize other distractions like email, your cell phone, because this time is truly for you. Uh, if you are able for these next 30 minutes to turn on your video and connect with those around you, I would love to see your faces and love to hear you connect and share because this material truly is interactive. So as we start our time together, I just wanted to share a clip from Charlie Brown, which I'm sure many of you might be familiar with. Uh, this is them doing a clip with the song Happiness in it. So while you are listening, I want you to think about one word that sticks out to you in this short clip. I guess it hasn't been such a bad I guess it hasn't been such a bad day after all. Happiness is finding a pencil, knowing a secret, telling the time. Happiness is learning to whistle, tying your shoe for the very first time. Happiness is playing the drum in your own school band. And happiness. Climbing a tree. Happiness is five different crayons. Catching a firefly. Setting him free. Happiness is being alone every night. At the and happiness is coming home again. Happiness. So I'm seeing in the chat that I am difficult to hear. Um, can someone give me a heads up if you can hear me now? Okay. Yeah, oh, we, I can hear you, Marissa. You're just a little, you're a little quiet. Okay, I will speak up and then in the future, I will try to figure out what's going on with my microphone, but thank you all for letting me know. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so take a minute if you would like, and drop that word in the chat that stood out to you as you were listening to Charlie Brown and his friends. The happiness, Diane and Megan. Friends, Jessica. Ice cream, happiness again. Alone. With those with young children, happiness. So one phrase that really stood out to me, um, I know someone mentioned it here, happiness, but also that time alone, but then coming back home. Today, we're gonna be talking about how connection relates to happiness. And I don't want to mistake that there is one way to be happy or that you need to be happy all the time. Um, just like was shown in this song in this very brief clip, there are lots of ways to define happiness and it's okay that it's different from person to person. And it's also okay to have some commonalities. So we're gonna be including research from scientists and psychologists about our mindset, and happiness, as well as how it relates to connection and engagement. There will be opportunities to practice and explore this throughout the session, as well as an invitation to apply these techniques after the session in your workplace. 
So let's sit, set the stage for this discussion. I don't usually have to convince anyone that they want to be happy at work. What I'm here to highlight are different ways to look at mindset and connection to help cultivate happiness in just one way. I also want to acknowledge that there are many factors outside of our control, which I don't have to tell you all with these past two years living in a pandemic. Although we're highlighting happiness and how it relates to connection in the workplace, I am by no means telling you that you need to be happy all the time. And please, please, please hear me on that because I want to be able to foster a place where you can be feeling all of the different emotions and that can be safe. So this offering is really to just help you think about your mindset so that when you're in a place to be able to share that and to connect with others, you have some resources and tools. Some scientific stats can show that those are healthier, 10 times less likely to take sick time when they're happy. People are also more productive at work, up to 12%, and they're less likely to leave their current position. So let's take a minute to explore how we each define happiness, either on your laptop, on a scrap piece of paper nearby. I want you to note three words that make you happy. Then identify one word that makes you the happiest. So just take a moment here in your thoughts or write it down. Now I'd like to encourage if anyone wants to come off of mute, share that word, or if you want to type it in the chat. I see family. When Megan says sunshine, can relate to that. Little kid belly laughs. Yes, Jacqueline. Children, family, friends, and laughter, Diane. Respect, absolutely, Lisa. And nature, a oh, serenity. I see a note that family was the first word, but you're actually trying to figure out if that is your first word. And that's okay. It might change from moment to moment as well. And quiet time. So as you can see here and what people have shared and maybe as you're reflecting on your own words that happiness is unique and connections might play a piece in that, which is really what we're gonna highlight today but know that your happiness is unique and that's okay and we should celebrate that. So we all want to be happy at work. So how do we get there? I want you to look at this statement. I am happiest at work if there are no right or wrongs, but let's flood the chat box and see what makes people happiest at work. Could be similar or it could be different than what you noted earlier. Productive communication, relationships with colleagues, keeping everyone safe. I see respect again and appreciation. Ooh, when I can get done what I'm being asked to do. Lisa, when my day goes as planned. Making a difference. Productivity again. And respect. Not being overwhelmed. Productive and successful. So we can see some similarities as well as things that might be really important to individuals. So there's research done by psychologist Sean Anker, basically about the research and science to back up what we've always known, that happiness is better for you. So often 
we think about this idea that success creates happiness. However, what Sean really is trying to show through his research is that happiness fuels success. So really the opposite of what we're thinking that success is what drives happiness. You know, oftentimes you hear that happiness is, is a destination, that if I get a new job, I'll be happier. If I get a raise, I'll be happier. So this idea that success is creating and fueling happiness, but Sean is really saying that happiness fuels success. So if we can change our mindset and start with happiness, it can be an indicator and a stepping stone toward that success. So if you wanna make a change, whether at home or at work, let's start thinking about our mindset. And I've been showing you lots of words, so we're gonna put this into practice with some pictures. So what do you notice in this picture? Feel free to come off mute or type it in the chat. An old wall, mm, calm, leaves in the gate, peaceful, many colors, specifically gold and more colors. A change of season. See a lot of peaceful fall, beautiful scene and calm. Serenity was related up earlier as well. And solitude. So I'm gonna have you looking for something very specific now in this picture. Can anyone see the woman lying at the base of the tree? I see some head nods. She's right at the base of the tree with her legs covered in leaves. Yeah, you didn't notice her at first because you aren't looking for people like that usually in a fall scene. Now that you know kind of what to look for, let's see if this can get easier. Oh, I saw a no. So let me see if I can point out with my mouse. She's at the very base of the tree. Her head is slightly turned with her arms and then her legs are covered in leaves. Hope that clarified. Now, what do you see in this picture? beach bag, vibrant colors, someone else sees a hidden person. Can anyone know where that person is? Lots of colors. So right in the center of this picture, if you look, you can see slightly raised the outline of a person. Their face is in about the second to third row. And yes, someone said appears to be standing. Right in the middle. What about this image? What do you see? I know some people have noted they're only able to listen today and can't quite see or type in and that's okay. So I see a few more people are noticing that there's someone camouflaged at the bottom of the tree. So if you look at the large tree, there's a woman camouflaged in the colors of the leaves. This is our last one. What do you see here? So 
Someone said they love this one, Tinder. There's someone in the stones. They're about the top half of this center stone, eyes closed, and you can really see their nose. So how does this relate to mindset? This was really hard the first time we started seeing that very first fall scene because your brain had no idea what to look for. But as we made a conscious effort to go through these pictures, it got easier. Now, no, I didn't say easy, easier, which is what Sean Anker is talking about with training our brains to look at something differently. With practice and effort, we can shape how we think and what we start to pay attention to. I see Diane notes here, we really had to focus and take your minds off of other things. Yes. And how much can that relate to what we're doing at work? Sometimes we have to focus on things, take our minds off of other things that might be really demanding for our attention. And that can be really, really difficult. Insert the pandemic this whole past two years. You know, there are lots and lots of different things demanding for our attention. So if we're working on changing our attitude and how to make those stepping stones into happiness at work, let's look at some goalposts. In a perfect world where all employees are happy at work all the time, they have three factors in common. There's engagement, meaning there's ownership in this, that you're responsible for something versus, hey, my boss just told me to do this, so I'm doing it. There's connection and value with your work relationship. You can have those meaningful conversations with your colleagues. And then fulfillment. This is understanding the value of your job, either relating back to the organizational goals or achievements or your purpose. So let's fill the chat and see which one of these is most important to you as being a factor of happiness. No right or wrong. See some connected, engaged, and fulfilled. Who adding another one present? So these are all important, and I don't want to take any one away from the other. But in the time we have today, we're gonna to focus on connection because it can fuel both engagement and fulfillment. Your relationship with your team members, including your colleagues and managers alike, has a huge impact on whether you want to come to work. Now, again, I want to highlight that even with these three pieces, we're not telling you to be happy at work all the time. However, these are ways that you can try to start making those stepping stones to have a happy work environment. Just a side note, I recently listened to a podcast. Um, it's called Unlocking Us with Brene Brown and Karen Walren. And Karen was talking about connection as well. And one of the things she does is journal every day on three topics. And one of those is connection. What really stood out to me is that connection can look different every single day, which is what we're going to dive into here in this material. But I want you to know that there is not a right or wrong way to be connected. This could be connection to yourself. This could be connection to your peers. But it doesn't have to mean physically standing side by side or doing something specific. So we're going to take um, five minutes into a breakout room. And these are just going to be small groups. And I want you to brainstorm what a connected team looks like. Specifically, I want you to think about what words or images come to your mind. And pick one spokesperson to come back here to the team and relay those words or images. All right, so we'll break out and then we'll come back.
Carolyn, are these breakout rooms going? The rooms are going. Uh, some people just have not joined them. Oh, okay. as you head into your rooms, brainstorm what a connected team looks like, words or images that come to your mind. For those of you that are just entering, we're in a breakout room and they should be coming back shortly. So while you're waiting, we're reflecting on connection and connection in the workout place. So if you wanna jot down some words or images that come to your mind as you think of connection, and they should be back in the next two minutes. All right, the breakout rooms will automatically close in 60 seconds. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Thanks for organizing that.
I see we're starting to come back here into the room. We're just going to wait for everyone to filter back. People should be filtering back here shortly. And welcome back, everyone. So I would love for your person who you chose to share, if you want to unmute and tell us what words or images came to your mind with connection. Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Kathleen. Um, and you know what? I did not write down the initials or names of the group that I was in, but we were all like sharing. And, um, and so they know who they are, so they can kind of come off mute or just wave. Um, but they were awesome in the sense of us sharing what, you know, makes up a team as far as building connections. Um, one was having good support. Another one was um, being able to appreciate everyone's strengths that they bring to the table. Also special would be a safe place to verbalize. That was really key, that you feel safe enough to express what you're feeling, good, you know, pros, cons, whatever. Um, listening respectfully, um, being able to work together, being positive, um, you know, breeding a ground of positivity and concerns. And so the, the bottom line was being able to communicate and being able to do that. Um, and then at the end, you know, coming together to know that we all ultimately working together, not against each other and have a common goal. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what a great way to kick us off. So <laughs> being able to communicate in a safe way and share that really working together as a team. Thanks for kicking us off. Another team. I can go next. Uh, there was just two of us on our team. Uh, we had talked about um, diff, uh, dressing up, having different uh, events for say Dr. Seuss week, different themed weeks, spirit week, SEL week, um, recognizing everyone for their role, no matter what it is, how big or who, how small, you know, just being part of a team, um, collaborating with each other, recognizing each each other's abilities, the differences, you know, and the likenesses that we can bring together to the team. Absolutely, Lisa, and figuring out those ways to have those meaningful spirit weeks, and you gave great ideas with Dr. Seuss week, and making sure that everyone has that input and feels like they are a part of a team. You are a two-person team, but mighty. <laughs> Hello, I can go next. We were also we were also two uh, person team. I think Denise was the other person in my group, but um, we kind of just used like some key words when we were you know game planning. So we used communication and being like an active listener, being able to um, have that open line of communication to discuss you know all the you know positive negatives and outlooks on different things. Um, collaboration, being able to work with others, and then um, just having that safe space and freedom to express ideas confidently. Um, and like we said, safely um, amongst our, you know, our team or whoever we're in a group with. Yes, that safe place is coming up a lot, just like we started off our time together. And that collaboration and active listening, knowing that when you talk, it's going to be heard. Is there one more team? I ha yep, we have a, uh, we had a team of four and basically a lot of the same ideas. Um, we thought a well-connected team looks well-supported, valued, uh, that they're equals with well-defined roles, and that their personalities mesh. So here, making sure that the lines of communication are clearly defined with those clear roles you really highlighted, Holly. Yeah. So if there no one... There ahead, was, and if no one's going to say for my team, I'll jump in there because I love, so we had a visual and I love the end visual. We said it's kind of like a web. So we kind of pictured that web of all those connections. 
And then it doesn't have to, connection doesn't have to be like something major, like I agree it's goals and all of that, but we talked about it's the simple things too, like a smile and nod of the head, acknowledging that we're connected. And someone in our group even said, well, I think there were like six of us maybe, well, I even feel like a connection here, right? And we went down little bunny trails too. So I, I think we did really feel connected to each other and got to know each other a little bit in a very short time. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that visual, Yvonne, that, that visual of the web. And it's not just the big things, but all the small things that can connect us as well. You all had wonderful conversations. It sounds like these, these breakout rooms were really a great hub of conversation. So now I know you received a handout or you will be receiving a handout um, at the end of this. And this is a way that you can take this and truly apply it after the session. So considering the ways you can start building connections. So this is in your handout and you can consider these questions as you go home. And you, again, you can use visuals, you can use actual written word, whatever is best for you and your knowledge flow to apply. And I just want you to take one minute and take an insightful application moment and jot down something you will commit to trying based on our time here together. I know it was quick, but there were great conversations happening in those rooms and great chats. So take this moment, write down something you can commit to. So I just want to leave you with this, whether your glass is full, empty, or somewhere in between, I want to acknowledge that and let you know not to judge where you are today, because all of us are in different spaces and honor that. Even if you can't control the things that are happening outside of you, there is something you can take away and apply today. And hopefully you're able to take a grain away and share it with your team or hold on to it for yourself today. These are just two of the videos that were used um, in helping to build this PowerPoint and this presentation, as well as, of course, happiness from Charlie Brown. And if you have a moment, please feel free to fill out that evaluation that Krista and her team are going to send out. We would love to hear your feedback um, on ways that we can continue to use these in the future. And thank you all for showing up and sharing. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Marissa. And thank you all so much for being um, such active participants. You never know how these uh, virtual sessions are gonna go. So I applaud all of you for being so um, involved and in, in participating today. Uh, as Marissa mentioned, please go and complete this evaluation. Uh, Kathleen or Caroline, one of, them, one of our team members is gonna drop uh, the link right into the chat but there is the link at the bottom of this screen. Please, please go complete this evaluation. Once you have completed this, your name's gonna be entered into a drawing to win the Focus Calm EEG headband. Uh, this comes with a lifetime sub subscription to Focus Calm app, which includes educational brain games, guided meditation sessions, and set up options for multiple users. So it's great for the classroom. Uh, it helps decrease stress, stay relaxed, and increase productivity. Five participants today are gonna to receive this. Uh, if you don't receive, uh, if your name doesn't get picked today, please join us. Us. On April 21st, we're going to be handing out some more of those along with some other giveaways. That session is going to be from 1 to 2 p.m. again um, on Thursday, April 21st. We're going to be focusing on mental health in the era of COVID and then everything DISC workplace. So if you have signed up or if you'd like to sign up, please go ahead and do so. Please reach out to us if you need a link again to, to have a colleague sign up. About a week before this presentation, you're uh, uh, 
all the folks who have signed up are going to receive a link to go in and, and uh, do the DISC assessment. Everybody will have access to their own personalized DISC assessment. So we can start learning about our own work style and the work style of our colleagues. So we can start appreciating how everybody uh, works and how everybody communicates. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I really hope you join us. And then as always, we really encourage you to stay connected with the pro wellness team. I didn't, I know I didn't get a chance to answer any questions or, or concerns that you might have specifically related to the physical wellness dimension. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, either via email or, or, you know, you can call us, uh, preferably email us because none of us are in the office, but we do continue to check, check our voicemail. Um, so I thank you all again for, for, uh, participating. If you do have any immediate questions, uh, and, and you want to ask those by all means, feel free to stay on, but go ahead and complete those evaluations. Um, and I will stay on for the next few minutes if you do have, if you do have any questions or want any other tips or resources. Uh, thank you again, Marissa, so much for joining us today.